everyone, and welcome back. I'm Heather Stamper, and today is going to be a book talk day. And I have been a very busy reader and listener because some of the books are, are audiobook. The first book I want to talk about is Tell Me How You Really Feel by Amina May Safi. I read this book because I needed a Muslim American author for my Pop Sugar Book Challenge, and that was one that they recommended. It is a YA about these two young ladies and one's had a crush on the other since God only knows and the other one has a big chip on their shoulder and will they end up together? I don't know. There was a very interesting part about it where it was about film craft because that's part of the plot was making a film. So if you're looking for a good YA or family situation or you know deciding what you want to be when you grow up or LGBTQ then this one is not bad. This one was okay. I'm I, I'm showing my age because I'm like, oh yes, somebody meets somebody, they don't like each other, then they like each other, and then ta-da! You know, I've I've read enough of those, but <laughs> that's just me. Uh, and if you've not read a lot of those, then sure, go for it. I finished the Caraval series uh, finale by Stephanie Garber was the culmination of all of the magical Caraval series. Time travels involved this time. I'd say the first book was the best. I don't know if you need to needed to add all of the other stuff for the other two books because I felt that it was compact enough, the first book, and maybe that's what happened. Maybe she just thought that, you know, Caraval was just going to be a one shot and then it's like, oh no, we want more. And so she wrote more. That happens. Got a lot of imagination. It's just a lot in three books. And as a writer, I'm like, mm, could we have done this, the same thing, but in one book? Because I really thought that the first book was really nice and tidy. And the other two just started to stretch out a little, little too much for my taste. Another book that I'm almost finished with is Telephone Tales by Gianni Rodari. This book came from the Italian. It got uh, republished in English this year. I had gotten it because I thought, all right, I can get my book written in 2021 checked off the list because it was in the new book section of my library. Well, it had been previously published in Italian and in English. This was just a reprint. So that's, that doesn't quite work for my category, but oh my gosh, it is so cool. And I mean, it makes for a really nice change Basically, it's an anthology of very short stories. We're talking like 500 to 1,000 words tops for each story. The, the premise is this man promised his daughter a bedtime story every night, and he's like a traveling salesman accountant type person. And this took place at a time where cell phones didn't happen yet. So every night he would go to a payphone and pop in his lira or, and call his daughter and tell her the fastest bedtime story possible because there were some where he was really long distance. He had to get it done in three minutes. And so it's very charming, very witty. I haven't finished all of them yet. I would say the majority of them are, are kid friendly, but grownups are going to be like, yeah, <laughs> there's some definitely some tongue in cheek stuff going on there too. I, I really dig it. So I would recommend it if you are a person who likes fairy tales or bedtime stories or just stories in general the the illustrations just kind of pop out and I think it was really creative the way they packaged the whole thing so the other one I'm almost finished with and this is my one uh audiobook that's in my car right now Royal Witches Witchcraft and the Nobility by Gemma Hallman now you're gonna learn about me I love historical fiction I love medieval historical fiction. I really th find that interesting. I read Pillars of the Earth. I found that really fascinating. And I'm a big fan of Philippa Gregory with the Cousins Wars, with the Ro War of the Roses up to the Tudors. So I'm a little bit of a nerd when it comes to that. And so when I saw this, Royal Witches, it had to do with the British royalty that was accused of witchcraft in the 13 and 1400s which may sound like, yeah, well, who cares about that? Because of what happened at the time when these people were accused, these women specifically, one, these were queens that were being accused of witchcraft 
or they were they were very high ranking. This was a big deal. And a lot of times it had to do with money, just like the Salem witch trials. All, a lot of it had to do with money and property and, and land rights and things like that, which is why they were being accused of witches. You know what I mean? So the royal witches, it deals with Jonah Navarre, who was Queen of England before the War of the Roses, was married to Henry the Fourth, and Henry V was her stepson. So if you've ever watched the Kenneth Branagh, Henry V, beautiful stuff. Then she was accused of witchcraft. The second one was a lady named Eleanor, and she was the wife of Prince Humphrey, who was the younger brother of Henry V. There were lots of different things going on here, but mostly it was because she was lower born and she married a prince of England. She could have become queen if something had happened to, you know, the young Henry the Sixth. So that made for awkward. And so there were more consequences for her. Then you have Jacqueta of Luxembourg, who ended up. And if you read Lady of the w Rivers, it, they have a direct reference. So they cross-reference each other, which I think is pretty cool. And it helps you delineate between the facts and the fiction. Again, records were not the best held things back then, so you kind of had to use some creative licensing. But again, had to do with politics and money. So her daughter Elizabeth marries King Edward of York, Edward the Fourth, like Fourth, and it was all kind of like weird how that came about. And so, of course, there was like, "Are you really married to him? Did you do that love magic thing to kind of get that going there?" Seems a little sus, but again, we're in the middle of War of the Roses. Uh, the Woodvilles were originally Lancastrian, and everybody else was for York, which that was the two warring factions, uh, House of York and the House of Lancaster. Game of Thrones got a lot of their original stuff from War of the Roses. You can make comparisons, just no dragons. Sorry. <laughs> so... Those are the things that I've been reading for the end of August, beginning of September. So in a couple of weeks, I'll share a little bit more about what I'm reading. And hopefully I'll be able to finish my Pop Sugar Reading Challenge. I only have like three books to go. And my other goal was to read 80 books in a year of whatever. And so I'm getting closer to that goal. I have 10 books to go for that challenge. So excellent. Now, if I may make, meet my goal before December, am I going to stop reading? <laughs> Goodness, no. I love to read. So that's going to happen. So if you like these videos, please click like and subscribe and dingling the little notification bell. And I will see you in the next video. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.